Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about one of the biggest misconceptions and misunderstandings there is about Montessori, and that's how pretend play, imaginative play, and creativity fit into the Montessori environment. So to keep these videos short and to the point, I'm actually going to make this into a two-part series. Today we're talking about pretend play and imaginative play specifically, and my next video is going to focus on creativity and how that fits in the Montessori environment. And I'll go ahead and link that video up here for you as soon as it's ready in a couple of days. It's not difficult to see why this misunderstanding of pretend play and imaginative play in the Montessori environment came to be, considering most of what we're seeing online is how children are partaking in practical life activities. They're cooking, they're cleaning, they're taking care of their environment, and they're taking care of themselves. And while this is the most fascinating and interesting part of Montessori, in my personal opinion, I can see how it gives the perception that children don't actually have the chance to be children. They're never actually playing with traditional looking toys, and they're never partaking in pretend play. Or are they? But today we're going to discuss how pretend play and imaginative play do actually fit in the Montessori environment. First, we need to make several distinctions. Until the age of six, children don't have the ability to distinguish between fantasy and reality. Now, there is new research indicating that that age may actually be as early as three. So until somewhere between three or six years of age, children don't understand the difference between fantasy and reality. So when they're introduced to concepts like talking and walking animals, witches, wizards, superheroes, they take that to be real and to be the same as as a duck walking outside, for example. Now, how much of that you want to implement in your home is going to be your call. Personally, I have chosen to allow things like talking and walking animals because there is plenty of exposure to how animals really talk and walk and what they really look like in our nature walks, as well as all the other books and materials that we have in our home. I think that is the least offensive type of fantasy that we can introduce to a child because it is not too far from the truth. After all, animals do communicate to each other in some ways, and some people do have a way of communicating with animals. I don't think it is too far-fetched to say that there is some sort of communication happening between them and that they are somehow walking, talking, communicating, and creating a society within their own animal world. Personally, I have chosen to allow for that kind of fantasy in our home because a lot of the activities, books, and eventually movies that incorporate things like walking and talking animals have more benefits than drawbacks, in my personal opinion. If you do choose to incorporate other levels of fantasy in your home, such as superheroes or witches or wizards, I just encourage you to always have that communication with your child that this is not real. This is happening in the book, but it doesn't exist in real life. Eventually, your child will reach the age where they understand what that means, and it will really help them make that distinction sooner rather than later. Imagine if play is what stems from the child. It is what they create in their mind based on their personal experiences. This would be pretending to be a vet, pretend cooking, pretend taking care of a baby, and so on. Now, the argument for limiting the child's exposure to fantasy, which has been created by the adult, is to really allow that imaginative play to soar because it has no boundaries, as opposed to when we introduce something like fantasy and the child now has something that they can rely back on and essentially imitate. Now, the other distinction we have to make is between a Montessori home and a Montessori class. The Montessori method was originally created for a Montessori class, specifically that three-hour work cycle. And after being in school, children would go home or they would go outside where they would have a chance to explore that pretend and imaginative play. Dr. Montessori had encouraged parents to have very simple items for their children to play with so they would have the chance to really explore their creativity, their imagination, and have a way to pretend play as well. So yes, for that three-hour work cycle in the Montessori class, she was focused on providing children with real-life examples and real-life activities. Dr. Montessori chose to focus on the real-life activities because in her observations when she presented children with regular toys versus real-life activities, they drastically gravitated towards the real-life activities. There have been recent studies that support this same finding, and if you think about the common complaint that parents have, my child has a playroom full of toys, all they want to play with is the box that it came with. Of course they do because that's the real life activity and the real life item they see you interacting with. They see you opening that box, they see you sweeping the floor, they see you putting away the laundry. Where does pretend play and imaginative play fit in the Montessori environment? Pretend play will remain in the Montessori home. So if you have a pretend play kitchen or you have pretend baby dolls with a little stroller, that is a wonderful way for them to continue practicing those skills that they so desperately want to practice. If you have the ability, do allow your child to join you in the kitchen. If they have a younger sibling, allow them to help you out to the best of their abilities. But there's absolutely no harm and it's completely beneficial to allow your child to partake in pretend play as well. Will you see those same items in the Montessori class? No, because children will have access to the actual real life activities. They have a chance to cook, they have a chance to use an actual child-sized vacuum. They don't need access to the pretend play version of those things because that is available to them during their work cycle in the Montessori classroom. However, when they're at home, they don't 
don't realistically have access to all of those activities with adult supervision at all times. The best way for them to get that energy out and continuously practice those skills that they crave is to allow for pretend play. What if the child wants to take materials and use them for a different purpose and create something else and imagine that it's something else? Is that allowed? Absolutely. As long as the child is not being disrespectful, disruptive, or destructive towards the material, they're absolutely allowed to experiment in different ways of using that material. So the other day, for example, Stella took the burst that she has for her color matching activity, she took my tripod, and she started sending them down the imagined slide that she created. It's a wonderful way for her not to only practice that imagination, but to also work on the same skills that I'm trying to present to her in her activities, just in a different way. She really had to work on balancing the birds just right, so she was using fine motor skills, she was using gross motor skills, she was watching how they move through the air, so she was tracking their movement, she was also experimenting a lot with gravity. There were a lot of discoveries that she was creating and simply utilizing her activities in a different way. So to drive the point home, are real life activities more beneficial to the child? Yes, and that is what they're going to be drawn to time and time again. But is it realistic for the adult to offer those activities 24 hours a day to the child or the 12 hours that the child is awake? No. And that's where pretend and imaginative play comes in. And so there's absolutely no squashing of creativity, pretend play, or imaginative play in the Montessori environment. We're simply allowing the child to also partake in the real life activities because that's what the child really craves. And stick around for my next video, which is about creativity and how that's fostered and what it looks like in the Montessori environment as well. Until next time, I hope you stay safe.